Yes, that was a nice one. I like that. <clears throat> Sometimes you just need to hear something nice in order to have a good day. Like, uh, good morning, how are you? And uh, uh, I really care for you and people uh, does uh, contact me. And, uh, I appreciate uh, that. Um, people may also find me sometimes very hard to get. But uh, they shouldn't bother. <clears throat> they shouldn't mind that. It's my personality. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's easy. Depends on how you approach me and vice versa. So thank you for doing that. And um, we have to be uh, lenient, as someone told me, that has been to me, lenient. That is in their own eyes, what lenient is. But what is the topic today? I've been cleaning, I've been uh, doing the preparation for Shabbat tomorrow and um, I feel good. I even went to the dentist early in the morning, so I couldn't. I woke up and say, said to myself, now I have overslept. I didn't hear, hear, the, hear the bell. I, uh, I have this timer and um, clock that wakes me up and uh, if if I'm af very afraid so now I got some uh, kind of an indication that this really stresses me up when it's early in the morning if I have an appointment early in the morning I don't even <laughs> I really have, have with my doctor now I'm so confident with him so it's okay, I, I put him straight sometimes and he is good, yeah, he's a good, um, uh, good man. Um, but um, to keep an appointment for me is the worst thing I can go through because I prepare this appointment in days ahead, not because I am afraid of anything, it's nothing that I'm afraid of, <laughs> and that wonders me. I'm not afraid of meeting people, I'm not afraid of uh, those uh, maniacs that are uh, walking around freely, <laughs> they are still out there, <laughs> they, uh, they haven't been... Um, hospitalized or um, jailed or in prison <laughs> I know they are they are out there all of them <laughs> crazy people <laughs> but um, the, the degree of um, stress it have on me is uh, <laughs> is um, this kind of <laughs> I, I I can't get it out of my mind that it is early in the morning and I have to keep my appointment that that is the that is the squared framed uh, uh, thing I, I I get so stressed so um, I woke up early in the morning told myself oh now we I have overslept what do I do and I looked at the clock it was still <laughs> early in the morning half past five or something ah who would make an appointment uh, at that time but I have this time disorder I <laughs> ever after ever since I talked about time time delay time uh, enigmatic uh, notion of time and oh it uh, really got into my nerves you can see to my videos you can um, you can search it up let me do a search 
uh, on my videos and uh, let me time time I have a lot of videos uh, videos with time uh, the old timers if the old timers <laughs> Uh, time stands still, much blessing, and uh, moving backwards in time, and space is moving, the time stands still. <laughs> How come I can keep that? Uh, I, you see, I talked time into the space, so that I have this confusion of appointments. Because it doesn't go well with me, I stress over those issues. And uh, maybe you feel familiar to that. Uh, maybe you are uh, my sibling <laughs> in that uh, regard. Maybe we need to come together and talk about what we will do about all the appointments that uh, we have to keep. And um, I wonder how people can live and cope with uh, the whole day of appointments. I got me this. That was my appointment today. <laughs> hmm. That is the level of appointment I can have. I'm reminded, talking about appointments, <laughs> and Jesus had a funny take to that. <clears throat> not, all, not only funny, but quite strange, <coughs> quite strange. People came to, they wanted to see Jesus. And uh, they told him, there are some here that want to see you. <laughs> he asked, <laughs> he asked, they, they have no business with me. This a kind of <clears throat> rejection. He was uh, answering in a strange way that uh, the seed have to fall into the earth be totally spoiled in order to have fruit i don't know i don't i don't know whether, whether he spoke to the greeks uh, that uh, wanted to see him because they wanted to go up to jerusalem he, uh, he obviously knew about that kind of uh, attra attra uh, attraction that uh, <clears throat> Jesus obviously had, but uh, I think that was the clear message that he gave back to the Greeks because as he said, I came to the Israel, the house of Israel. He didn't come for the Greek, but they knew by the, the answer that he gave what kind of death he would be suffering. I have to adjust this again. Um, what kind of... He knew it well. And uh, maybe it was a temptation for him to be seen. I can write this down.
to be seen and being popular. I think that is what he opposed by the way he acted. He, he may have felt the temptation since the devil tempted him in the desert and he, he wanted to both give him um, the ability to, to make stones to bread. But more, at, um, if he fell down and prayed to him, he will give him the whole world as some kind of a servant. What, uh, what would be a tempting thing for Jesus to invite those Greeks? Maybe it was the intellectual uh, temptation. Because uh, Jesus may have been a pro pro prodigy, a child that was so advanced in his own field. That he replied to his uh, parents. That, uh, don't you understand that much that I have to be in my father's house? Don't you understand that? So much you should know about me. You should know my place is here. He kind of got lost, but they found found him where he should be and he was very keenly aware <laughs> of the appointment that he that he had that he didn't want anything to disturb that his appointment was with the house of israel and if you if you look into the texts of um, the story you see that very much that he would be protecting them like a hen, pro protecting them, their little um, chickens. But they won't. They rejected him. And for that, he became a service. Or rejecting everyone else, rejecting to be the popular, intellectual, popular man. Today, I've been into some intellectual um, uh, debates on how to on how to come out of this intellectual um, back backyard that people uh, are in this uh, pit they don't want to die they want to live forever but jesus said i'm going to die the seed me i'm going to die if if not if i don't give up my status as a kind of a messiah, healer, prophet, and king. They wanted to make him a king. If I don't give it up, they will not see me again. They will not see me ever. So in the meantime, he went through this hell hole of his, of being rejected by his uh, brethren. They slandered him, made a mockery of him, and um, made unrecognizable for everyone. He became a Jew, a slain Jew, that they should know 
every Jew that went under the concentration camp can look up to him and see their own faces. Every man and every woman should look up to Jesus and see their own faces, recognize their own identity. People are so busy. Time confusion. Time confusion is so busy that we have a name for it. We have this kind of uh, time trap. It's a word, it's fellow. Uh, it's, uh, it's an Norwegian word for uh, being trapped in time. You can't get out of it. And I wonder how people that have so much appointments, so many appointments that they can, they have to grow some distance to people that really care for them because that is so time consuming in their own mind to spend time with family and friends is so time consuming that they just open up for some small amount and they value their appointments higher than uh, the life itself. How is that, my friend? How is that? You have to make appointments with your brother, with your sister. It's not really nice being so busy that you have no time for friends and family. You push them away. You look into your calendar your notebook, <clears throat> or what they call it, appointment book. Let me see if I can see. <clears throat> see that. I don't have the name in my, my uh, recollection. But that is how it is. You grow, you grow distance and foreign <coughs> to the closest ones. And the f further away you go away from friends and family. Further away from yourself because your appointment is capturing you and I think if we are talking about some mistake Jesus did it was making this appointment that he didn't really recognize himself maybe he did I feel very bad to say that but in a, in a way you can say that he went so far to lose himself. How would a loving and caring dad or brother give up his life for his siblings, his children, his uh, friends? That neither, neither would ever recognize him, even they knew. That he had the name, he had the, he had the name, he had the heritage, he had the family ancestry, but he was rejected because he had this appointment. And they didn't like it. You don't make appointment with uh, with fam family. You just come. You are one of us, but if that kind of appointment 
was provocating the Jews. How dare Jesus do that kind of appointment? Yet he was a promised Messiah. He came with his appointment, with the demands that you have to have the law in your heart. You have to have love in your heart. I think only Jesus knew where he was. No one could recognize that. And when you meet Christians today, you meet more or less the same. Without self-reflections. Without self-awareness. They are talking to you as you are the one that are sitting in the pupil's chair. Sit, you, sh you shouldn't place other people in the that chair. It's better to be in that chair by your own choice. So uh, the time appointments for me messed up my notion of my 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 awareness, my sense of time. Because I went so deep into it that I lost it. I may have lost very much about because when 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 I am unaware when I sleep and wake up and say to myself this appointment went off so I have to, I have to pay a lot of money because I lose my appointment but I have to drive <laughs> <laughs> so I reached it by minutes, one minute before uh, I had, I was busy here cleaning and uh, do, uh, doing uh, chores. Uh, not really, I was on the internet, <laughs> I forgot myself, I, uh, I did a lot of cleaning on the internet. And uh, people will recognize uh, some days after that uh, the cleanup was done. You see, when, when someone is ashamed of you, uh, that environment has to be cleaned out. That kind of environment is so toxic that it plays with my mind. That kind of uh, environment that they don't even ask questions. Ula. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I heard a lot of you, a lot by you, by by uh, other people. I want to hear it from you. But people are prejudiced. People are very uh, stubborn in that way. So you have to clean it out and let them never see you ever again. Just um, clean off. So that's a good uh, work, finding out what to do with the trouble. Not ever make appointments with those people that harm you the most. Never make appointment, Ma never make this kind of problem. That you were useless anyway. But they are pitying you. They are caring for you. <laughs> that you can't keep it up. I approve to myself. I'm okay. And uh, I do this for fun. And uh, they don't get it. They are so pre prejudiced that they don't really get what I say. Because they think one thing and, uh, and, uh, and hear something else. <laughs> so, Jesus and time, the appointment he made. Don't take it seriously. I'm the false prophet here. And uh, maybe it resonates with you. Maybe it's not. I don't care, really care. 
Uh, what I really care about is people that are coming here. Maybe they are going to visit me. I don't know. <laughs> they are coming here. New people, I haven't seen them before. Uh, I think they are just lost. Uh, lost in uh, space. Not only in time, but in space. <clears throat> yes. So, Jesus in, in a way pushed people that wanted to see him. He pushed them away and say, are, are you not willing to sacrifice for the better of someone else? Or do you have to sacrifice everybody for yourself, for your advancement, for your appointments that is more great than your relationships? You should mind those small, minute things in life that makes you blessed. We have to keep ble the blessing. Bless and be blessed. Appreciate. Here, um, every day, it's a drive now, more than before. I, I, thank, I really thank God for all the blessing he gave and have given me up through the years. I don't, I don't mind so much the atheists anymore. I don't mind the leftists so much anymore. They are, uh, they are so limited. I pity them so, so much. I feel so sorry for those that we are without God. For God is the soul of the entity. God blew the, the spirit into our uh, uh, system so we could live. Air. We are breathing. How great. It doesn't come by a random choice. The, the, the mechanics of the body doesn't come as a random thing. You have to reflect over those, those details that um, make the human spirit very alive. Even the atheist, I, I hear a guy on the internet that is so, he is pitying me so much for believing in God and he say, I pray for you. <laughs> Aril is a guy that I really appreciate because he say, I pray for you <laughs> because he believe in God and he, the God you believe in is so evil, even I am better than him. <laughs> so he is a good guy. Now he is using Biblical, <laughs> biblical terms and uh, I appreciate that and I'm calling him uh, brother, my brother, brethren. So you see even the atheists, even the secular people, they can't live without awareness of God because God is within, God is in everything, God is all. We just live and breathe in God. We can't go. We can't go without God. <laughs> so, my friends, this is a good day, and uh, stay blessed. Don't let time confuse you like uh, me, and uh, take uh, take some uh, learning from that. This video is um, all about you. Uh, reorganize your. Uh, uh, perspective of time <laughs> okay <laughs> that was a big one take care and keep the shalom <laughs>